Hi, my name is Muhammad Asif. I'm a product manager for Nuage BNS customer portal. Welcome to this uh, demo. Today, what I'm going to show you some of the features of the Nuage BNS customer portal. So before jumping to the actual live demo running in my lab, what I will show you is a quick overview of the demo setup here. On the right side, this is the Nuage BNS platform based on VST, VSCs, and a couple of the uh, virtualized NSGs in my data center. Uh, VNS customer portal is deployed as a, as a high available cluster uh, in a container based uh, platform. It has uh, its own uh, load balancer and SSL proxy, and it is communicating with the VSD using the VSD REST APIs. Uh, we will be using some mail server as well for sending the email and also notification app uh, for sending the e notification to the installer of the uh, CPE devices. The other, the, the, the other thing which uh, I just wanna highlight here is that the portal is based on the uh, three major modules. One is related to service fulfillment. Uh, second is visualization and administration. Uh, this demo, particular demo, is focused on the uh, service fulfillment, which include that uh, how easily you can create the layer three domain, which is a overlay VPN service uh, using portal with a few uh, clicks and few input parameters, and how you can create a new branch, how you can enable it and bootstrap through the VNS Coast customer portal point of view. Uh, there will be a separate video on the visualization and administration. I highly encourage you to take a look on those videos as well. And uh, let's go to the portal here. So portal has the two uh, different uh, uh, user experience. One is more from a service provider point of view, and another one is from the end customer point of view. Very, very quickly, I'm going to take a look first on a, from a service provider to give you a, to give you a browsing uh, experience, but Eventually, I will log in as a end customer and then I will create a branch and I will set it up uh, also a network and associate them together. So let's start with uh, logging into the into this portal using the using uh, as a as a service provider using this super admin login, which is like a root login. And the also the organization for the service provider is by default is CSP in Nuage platform. Other thing I want to hi highlight is that the portal is out of the box is a multilingual. You can add a new language into it by just uh, translating one file and copying into a particular location. Like we today have a, sp a Spanish and Japanese language already translated. So you can see by just click uh, your, your, your basically a portal is ready in any language. So I will switch back to English and log in as a super admin into this portal. So the first thing I am going to see on this portal is a super admin or service provider dashboard, which gives you me the topology of the different branches, where they are located, if they are activated, if they are waiting for activation, or if there is any alarms happening on them. The other thing, uh, there are a few more widgets you can see here, traffic widgets here, uh, showing me top of my customer from a uh, traffic wise, also showing me all the application which are uh, different type of users are running uh, on this network. So this is more a high level summary from a service provider point of view. There are a few menus from a service provider. Organization is the most important. And this is the area where you can see all of your customers basically. This organization is equivalent to an enterprise which is equivalent to a customer. Uh, some of the customer you see here, the one I'm gonna use for my demonstration because as a JPS network, and I will log in as a JPS network user and I will do the rest of the stuff. Although I can do everything which end customer can do as a service provider as well. I can impersonate uh, same behavior as the end customer user can do it. And this is the exact user experience or the dashboard the end customer is gonna look at when I'm logging as a GPS network, but I am also super admin and I can see everything what they can see it. And they will have their own dashboard, uh, which will have a slightly different widgets and data especially in the widgets, uh, but we will look at that when I log in as a end customer user. So going back here, and uh, the other thing I wanna highlight is, highlight is that uh, 
service provider can create their own user like admin user read only user and they can give the different type of the uh, access to the their user setting is another very important way you can change the logo uh, you can select a logo file and the logo will be changed automatically you can use a palette to basically change the color scheme of the portal to match with the whatever branding uh, service provider can have it now without wasting any more time what i'm going to do is i'm going to log out of this portal same portal but now to instead of as a super admin i'm going to log in using my own uh, user id which is specifically i have created for that particular customer so password is same i will not enter again but the the, the customer right now is gps network as i highlighted uh, under service providers view so i'm going to log in now as a end customer user MUS I guess so as soon as I log in here I see a dashboard which is a customer dashboard and let me make a slightly smaller here just to give you a full overview uh, you see that JPS network there is no arrow key to go back to because the service provider we can go back to the their own view but here I can see only this map again I can see only my branches as I can see which are activated which are not I can see a user's activity. I can see a network level summary. And here I can see a traffic now from a my enterprise point of view. I can see the traffic by branches now. I can see that in a network, which is a layer three domain from portal context, so at how many top, top layer three networks from a traffic point of view. I can see down, uh, uplink and downlink here, here. Mostly looks like uplink here. And again, application and the additional widget you see is SLA violation. Not pretty, very much happening there, but in my other video, when I'm gonna do the visualization where reporting and widgets are more focused, I will be more uh, using a portal with the more uh, meaningful data or more variety of data. The thing I'm gonna focus uh, today is this branches and network part. So if we look here, network here, network is a layer three network. We see some of the uh, services already created here right so I know the management service is actively passing data here so if I look into this one as the end customer so I can see that there are at eight endpoints are created eight subnets are created and some of them are actually also connected to the CPEs let's see the west east and north these are the branches, these are the associated with CP. Other of them are not associated with any of them. Some of the value add functions are enabled here, and those are easily, very easy to enable using the menu, either at the service level, which is the stop level, or they, you can go to the, the subnet level. You can enable them on individually on the admin level, subnet level, like a local breakout is basically done here, right, on this particular one just to send send traffic to YouTube or something. And you can do application this every quality of service and encryption enable either at this level or if you go, you can do it at the top level here. You can add a new zone from a zone. You can add a new subnet as well, but it's very simple to do. So just a one form you fill and you can do either automatic way or you can follow a manual where you can provide the IP address block and also set up the range for DHCP. So that's a more uh, manual way of adding it or simple way of adding it. Now, if I go back very quickly to show you that how easy it is to create a new network. So just click off a of one button here, add network, and it can ask you very simple, either using a simple methodology where you just provide the name. Let's say we call it de demo network. And we select how many uh, endpoints we want from a subnets point of view. Let's say I want four subnets in it. And so this is one way. And the other thing is that what is the size of those uh, branches where uh, I'm gonna associate those subnets? So is it, depending on this option here, what portal is gonna do is gonna, I'm gonna select the uh, IP address block appropriately. Other way is that you can start with the custom network where which basically you start with a simple network and then you can add the subnets exactly this using the same form as I showed you a few minutes earlier. So I will use a simple method here, just one click, two in, three input data per, input parameters and my, my, my uh, network is ready here. I can click on this and it will show me 
uh, four different endpoints with the different address blocks you can see here. Uh, nothing is enabled on this one. So I can go ahead and I can enable if I want. For example, I want to put a limit you know, in terms of rate limit. So I can enable the quality of service. I can mention that I want it maybe 20 meg per second. And this is going to give, basically apply this quality of service for all the traffic going within the service. I can apply the same thing on subnet level as well. But that just, you can also apply the security policies, ingress and egress. Again, to make it very simple, we uh, have designed or abstracted that you can set it up those, some of the security rules in the Nuage platform and portal will expose them to be available for consumption, like one simple rule available here, ingress rule. You can choose it and you can apply it here. And it is already done basically. Yeah, the rule is applied now here. If you want, you can remove it as well. And some of the policy level things at ingress, same idea for egress, you can apply there. So that's a very quick overview. What are some of the things you can do in this portal at the network level? So the, the next thing which I will do is that I will go to the branches view. Remember we uh, saw east, north and west in the in the one of the management service which are already associated there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and create a new branch. But before that, let's take a quick look on any branch. Branch when we say, this is a, again a virtual image. So that's why it has only two uplink ports and one access port. And the access port is already connected to one of the service end subnet so that's what it is the view point of view i can edit branch i want but what i'm going to do now is to add a brand new branch so let's see i will add a south so i need can need there again i will just say demo description is optional uh, address needs to be meaningful because we want to place it on somewhere on a map so i will put blair street uh, toronto and uh, Ontario and Canada. Maybe I'm not providing the uh, postal code because I don't know at this time, but hopefully portal will automatically figure it out. As installer is again very important. That's the person who is going to receive the notification uh, for bootstrapping instructions and in any code he has to use. So I'm gonna put mine because name here. And I will see that how, but I'm going to receive email. So by in the same time, I'm going to enable my, uh, I will, I'm enabling my, the other thing. So let's go how much I have added there. Okay. So let's see branch name again. Let's enter that one Toronto. Uh, demo purpose. 200 Blair Street, Toronto, Ontario. Installer is again myself, simple. And this is where I'm gonna pick the device type or the bootstrapping. So these are one of the templates which are pre-provisioned in the Nuage platform. And through portal, you can control that which templates are visible to the end customer. So here we have made these two only visible to this particular customer. I'm gonna pick one step which only required email notification. So I'm gonna go and create a uh, branch here. I think I didn't put South, I should be putting South, but I put it uh, Toronto, something like that. So very quickly I can go and I can edit this branch. If I by mistake I did it, I can call it South and nothing has been done yet. So it is okay to change anything. So this is the one I just added a new brand and it needs a, it needs a, and you see that I try to receive an email as well. And that email is indicating me that I can go ahead and I can bootstrap this one. In a physical world, I need to connect my laptop to do that CP device and CP device needs to have a, some sort of a connectivity to the VSD to download the, all the configuration and all the authentication process. I will get back to this email, but let's take a look what is showing. Waiting for activation. And if I look at the dashboard, yeah, I can see now there is a new one created here south with this address. And I can go click and let, take a look that this is not in, in active right now to uplink ports. And this, there is no even a VLAN there created. So let's go back and let's try to bootstrap this one and go back to my email there is a link here there's a whole encoded uh, activation 
path is given here. Uh, because I'm bootstrapping in my data center on my virtual image of the NSG. So things are more simpler for me if I just click on here and my browser is automatically going to translate this to uh, address in my data center VM. And it is now connecting to that uh, NSG CPE in my data center. So it's, yeah, it looks like it uh, doesn't complain anything. Uh, by the time when I first time created, it was saying Toronto. That's why the name shows it is not the new one. But if I go back here and uh, and if I try to send a node again installer, the next time if I do this one, I should be getting with the appropriate name. So it's just a matter of how I created first time. And the email was sent right away with that. So it doesn't matter. Uh, as I said, mentioned, I can go ahead and I can activate. And once I activate, it should be shown as an activated in portal as well. So right now, if I go back to my dashboard and try to see it here, here you go. So it's activated, it's green. And if I go back to my branches, I can connect to one of the network as well. Or even if I go to network, and this is the one I created a few minutes ago. And if I go inside this network, there is a, a special button here where I can link the subnet to a branch. Let's say I want to link it to a branch which I just created uh, through this network and I can choose any of them. So depending which one I want to do. So I go ahead and I can say that I want to select this new branch CPE and using its only one available access port LAN port. And as I showed you, there is no VLAN created, but portal allow you to create it on the fly as well. So you can create a new one here, let's say 100 VLAN, or normally it is zero. So I will just go ahead and create this 100. And once I do that, now automatically on the same form, I have now, uh, if I select this, I should be seeing the 100 one created. And I can use now to link this CPE VLAN to that particular subnet basically creating a V port here. So you see that this one is now created, uh, linked basically. If I click on this south and I can go to the actually CPE view where I can see that this particular one is associated to this one. I can do the same exact step here as well. Once it is linked, the same button can be used to unlink it as well, right? So right now I can link it to the first subnet. And if I unlink here, and go back here, you see that this uh, VLAN is now empty. And I can go ahead either connect this particular one to maybe another network. So see which network. So there are a few, few network there. So either I can connect to the other network or I can connect to the same network. And I have an option to choose any subnet as well. Like let's, this time, let's go, I do the last one. And I go and connect it via this one area. So depending on, so you see this is get connected as well here. And you can see that now it is connected to the 3.0. And that's where I see that. Okay, so let me close this guy. And by the way, you can apply the egress quas here as well. That's what I think I was trying to see that egress quas policies on the uh, on the land side, you can apply them. Right now there's only one policy, but you can create as many policy in watch VSD as many policy you want. And then in portal, what you all you need to do is that you can set it up as a service provider, which policy you want to expose to the end customer. And the end customer will have the list here, whichever a service provider want. And then they can apply it here. But through service access control, which is a separate topic, but you can also control even if you want to allow end customer to have access to this type of feature. So I will cancel it. I will not apply it here. The th only thing I want to show here is as a conclusion to this demo that once you come here <clears throat> you will see now that the south CPE has been actually activated and it is linked to the demo network 3 okay so this thing so and last piece as I mentioned you you can always update this uh, service as administrator uh, if you have the rights you can for example this is a zone zero one two three if i want to add another subnet here i can add this using this form again a very simple form um, 
I can put names of the subnet, whatever I want, doesn't matter. Uh, and again, I can use either an automatic, which we use when we create the uh, the address on the service, but we can also have an option of manual where I can go and still I can select this one. So instead of four, if I want to change this one to something else, I can do that one. And I can do by default, 80% of this address space is used for DHCP. If I want to change that to something different, I can apply that. So that's how simple it is to add a new subnet into an existing one. And you will see automatically there is a new one we added here, which is not linked to anything, right? So that's there. And if I don't want any new branch, I can remove it very simply by just click of a button. And there are some, again, more feature reportings and that kind of stuff, uh, which we, I mean, encryption, you can, for example, enable it at the service level or this one. That's an IPsec you can enable for this service. And just again, a click of a button and it can be enabled for the whole service or maybe for a particular endpoint point of view. So I will leave the rest um, because application SLA profile and the network performance profile and the application discovery are related to the reportings and some of the statistics which uh, belongs to the visualization with demo video. So, so do not forget to check that video. That's again a very powerful feature we have added from a visualization point of view. Uh, make, I would highly recommend to check that video as well. So that's pretty much from a service fulfillment point of view. Uh, and uh, of course, there are many things which uh, you can do further, but I think that gives you a good idea about uh, from a user experience point of view, from a service provider point of view, from an end customer point of view as well. Thank you very much for watching this video.